So you may have just picked up your Steam Deck and you might be trying to figure out how you can use this specific gaming handheld. Now luckily for you, I'll explain exactly how to use it, hopefully it's a good enough tutorial for you guys. But here's the thing, the Steam Deck, you made a great choice picking it up and it's still easily a really good console that's going to be here for many many more years to come. Now if you've never used a Steam Deck before, welcome to the club, there's tons and tons of people who've never used one. So at least on the hardware on the outside, luckily for you, it's not a really difficult console to kind of understand. So on the outside, we have a pretty decent amount of hardware. So on the top left, we have our D-pad. So this is what basically allows us to go and scroll through and you know use this for certain games. We have our one button right here, which when we click on it, it can go and allow us to kind of click on. So then we have our joystick, we have our left trigger right here. So we can go ahead and basically within any game, we can go and move it around. We have our trackpad, so it allows us to go ahead and basically quickly kind of maneuver around if you click down. So it's really cool if you have certain games, you could that utilize that. It's an awesome little thing. We have our Steam button right here. So when we click on, it's almost like quick toggles. So we can jump to lots and lots of different things, and we'll click into that in a second. On the right side, and then we have like a speaker down here. On the right side, we have another speaker, which is awesome. We have our three dot button, which allows us to get into even more quick settings which allows us to adjust the brightness of our specific Steam Deck. We can change the audio of our Steam Deck as well, as well as the microphone input, we, which, we, which we have that capability right here, which is really cool. We have our other, so we have the ability of turning on airplane mode right here. We can go ahead and toggle on or off Wi-Fi right here too, which is really cool. And this Bluetooth, we can go ahead and toggle on and off as well, which is honestly really cool. So having these types of quick toggles right here, just being accessible right here within SteamOS is really awesome. And I'm sure lots and lots of people are going to be using that. We have another trackpad right here too, which is pretty cool. So again, if you want to, you can go and you know toggle this or adjust this into a certain game. Unlike the left one, which is kind of more like a D-pad, this one can be other things. We have our right joystick right here too. So again, for any games that you know need us to use a separate joystick, we have that type of capability right there. We have our A, B, X, Y buttons all the way in the top right. And then we have our little three lines right here, which allow us to quickly get into our you know games and get more information basically from whatever game we're talking about. So that is that basically for the front. Now on the very top of our Steam Deck, we have a little bit more capability. So starting off from the left side, we have our left one and left two buttons. So these two buttons basically allow us to, again, we're playing a game, a lot of buttons are needed for it. So I'm pretty sure these are, if you ever used a controller, you know what these are. We have our minus and plus volume buttons. So you can adjust the volume straight from these specific buttons right here. We have our headphone jack right here too, which is really cool. And then we have our fans. So these fans are really cool because they allow us to go ahead and basically cool our, our console down without having it thermal throttling. So that's a really cool thing that they've kind of thrown in here too. We also have our USB type C charger. And this is how we charge up our Steam Deck. We plug it in via the USB type C charger right here at the very top. And that's basically all you're going to have to do. It's super basic. There's not really too much you're going to have to do this. And that's a really cool thing. That is really awesome. Now, we also have our power button right here too. So if we want to power on our Steam Deck, we can just click this button. You should be able to hear a little sound and it'll turn on. But also, if you want to power it off, you can also hold it down to go and power the console down. All the way to the right, we have our R1 and R2 buttons right here. So what we can do is we can go and you know click on these buttons right there, and we can toggle those things on straight from there, which is really cool, and it'll basically come into the same panel. Now on the back, we basically have not anything super crazy. We have two other two big things to keep in mind for the rest of the console. So one, we have our fan intake. So we have the you know whatever the exhaustion. So I'm pretty sure the fan intake is here and the exhaust is here. We have more R buttons and more L buttons. So for if there's any games that are basically needing these types of buttons, you, I will tell you, some people have said that, oh, like it, it's hard, like, you know, it's annoying to have buttons back here. These are tougher to click on than these ones. These ones are very easy to click on. These ones are a little bit more tough. So you won't accidentally click these as much, which is nice, but it is really nice that Valve kind of gave us these options here for these buttons and these buttons. And finally, at the bottom, we basically have our micro SD card slot. So we have our micro SD card slot right here at the bottom left corner. And that's a really cool thing they threw in here as well. Again, they didn't have to give us a micro SD card slot, but it is amazing that they kind of gave us that type of capability here, which in and of itself is really, really cool. So in terms of the outside, that kind of covers up everything here. I'm really, really happy about it. And I think for the most part, that in and of itself is a really cool thing that they kind of threw in here. So beyond that, I'm pretty sure everyone knows on the outside what's going on.
Now, when it comes down to basically the rest of this console, there really isn't anything super wild that you wouldn't be able to figure out if you didn't just go ahead and basically just use this console in and of itself. So now, funny enough, I don't know why I'm getting these random problems, but when you come into the Steam Deck and you boot it up the first time, you are going to come into SteamOS as a software. You basically will just see a bunch of things. Now, there's ways so you can install Linux or Windows on it, but you will basically just see different games and different things that are coming out recently for you know SteamOS. You can search up for any games within Steam by simply just clicking up here and going through and typing it in. You'll basically be able to see more of your settings if you click on the top right corner right there where the status bar is. And you can basically see the performance, your battery life, some other things too. And you can even quickly toggle into other settings too. So if you want to click on the settings, you click here. If you want to click on your friends, you can click right here. If you want to click notifications, you'll see all the notifications that you have right there. I'll go and zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit more. And you'll see tons of other options and tons of different changes here too. And then you have a little feedback button here. But that is it. When you go and scroll through, you'll see more things. I mean, this is a very intuitive OS. And that's something that I really do like about this. If you want to play a game, you can go and find your games here. Or you can just click on Steam. You'll basically be able to find your library, which is right there. And you'll basically be able to find all the games that you have right there, which is really cool. Now, clicking back on Steam, the next thing is basically store. So if you want to also just buy a game or whatever the case you want to, you can go and find the games that you want. And you can basically find it under store, which doesn't even write under the Steam store. This is where you can go ahead and basically find all these new games and all these new things that are just being added. So it is really cool. I'm a fan of it. And you can download it within the Steam store. Now, friends and chats, we kind of saw media. If you have any videos or anything stored inside your micro SD card slot or anything that you have stored within your other devices or within the Steam Deck itself, you'll basically be able to find it here, which is another really cool thing that they kind of threw in here that we have that type of capability. Clicking back on Steam under our downloads, any games or anything that we've downloaded within our Steam Deck, it's going to show up right here, which is honestly, again, very cool that we have that type of capability. And you can see that within our Steam Deck in and of itself, which is pretty cool. Now settings, this is a big one. So there's lots of things within settings that I would recommend every single person to kind of get used to. So if you're purchasing your Steam Deck, you wanna make sure that you are used to kind of going through your settings because there's tons and tons of different things that every single person should know about. So under general, there's some common things. I mean, you can change your language. There's just so many different things that you can change here. For some reason, the touchscreen never seems to work for me. Under system, this is where you can go ahead and update your system if you want to. You can go ahead and change up lots and lots of different things. If you want to be part of a beta, I guess you can go and toggle that on here. You can go ahead and change up lots and lots of different things within your Steam account and Steam Deck. Under security, you can go ahead and kind of access or add a lock screen if you want to and add tons of different things within your specific console as well. Internet is just basically going to be your internet connection settings. So that's it basically right there too. Under notifications, you can go ahead and toggle on or off your notifications right here, which is honestly very, very cool. Under display, if you go and click on display, you can go and basically increase or decrease the brightness right there too, which is honestly very, very cool. Again, I'm a fan of the way the brightness toggle is, and you can go ahead and basically increase it or decrease it whichever way you want to. And I think that's a pretty cool thing too that we kind of have going for it. Under audio, you can go ahead and change up your audio settings here too, which again is pretty easy. Under Bluetooth, again, more or less the same. You can go and change or you know add Bluetooth devices by enabling your Bluetooth. If you don't plan on doing that, you should just have Bluetooth off because it'll save battery life. Under controller, if you wanna add a specific controller, you can go and add it here. Keyboard, you can change your keyboard settings. As you can tell, there's lots and lots of different options. So what I, what I would recommend doing is going through, understanding each one of these downloads and all these other things basically are the same thing as we talked about before, just those options and settings between them. But the other big one is storage. If you ever want to see how much storage you have left inside of your Steam Deck, or if you're ever curious to see, oh, well, like I had this micro SD card slot installed, but I don't know how much storage installed in it. You can always manage your storage, delete games, different things like that within your Steam Deck simply by coming to this panel. And you can even like, if I wanted to, I can click on Apex Legends, come into this screen, and I can go and open up this game straight from here too. So from here, if you ever want to, you can go and, you know, go back to your Steam Deck if you want to by clicking on Steam, clicking on Home, and you'll come into your Steam Deck panel. But what you can also do is you can hold down on that specific button under, but if you want to, you can also sometimes, if you want to restart your console or power it down, you can always hold down this the power button on the top right, and you'll come to this panel, and you can always power off your specific Steam Deck. You can sleep it, shut it down, restart it. You can go ahead and change accounts. You can switch to desktop, or you can do whatever you want to.
but in this case you can click sleep if you want and the steam deck will go and sleep down and it will save battery life if you want to do it that way so that is pretty much how it's done if you have any other thoughts or questions let me know in the comment section below hit the like button now me so much but definitely hit that subscribe button more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then